Welcome everyone to the On Time On Target Financial Thought Leadership Series. And I couldn't be more excited today than to bring you my youngest guest ever into the series, and that's Indy Rossi. Uh, Indy and I met, uh, she's a little bit younger than me. You might be able to tell that from the, the picture, uh, but I'm not gonna share her specific details. She can if she wants. Uh, but Indy and I met through a third party, Mark Jarrett, um, who is a master networker. And I've been working with him on some other type of social media things to try to figure out how, how to best get out there what I do. And he said, Indy Rossi is the person that you need to meet and talk to. And so far, I found that everything Mark Jarrett has said is spot on because I did reach out to Indy and it was it, she was exactly the person I needed to help me with my Instagram game. Uh, she, we talked some YouTube stuff. We talked some other social media stuff. Uh, but for the past week or so, if you've seen my Insta, if you're on my Instagram, you need to you know check it out. If you're not at Steve Ankerstar. Uh, so, um, but if you've seen it, it's gone from like maybe not even passing grades to rock solid A pluses. Um, you know, my like, hey, I, but I bet you Steve's not doing that anymore, and you'd be right. Uh, <laughs> it was it was done for me. Um, so anyhow, if you've seen that stuff, it's fantastic. So with that, Andy, why don't you get us started with? Uh, Kind of your backstory and tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, well, I'm 24, which right. if you're doing, that's how old I am. Um, I'm always the youngest person in the room, which I think is one of my, I guess, better qualities if you can count that as a quality. I think I'm someone who has a lot of courage and that ties into my backstory, which I guess is interesting. I don't know if I find it that interesting, but Steve thinks it's interesting, right? So... <laughs> Last year, yeah, in 20, it was 2019, so it's 2021 now, I was a waitress. I was, uh, let's see, three years out of college, three years out of college at the time, and kind of thinking to myself, you know, I really thought I would be somewhere else at this point in my life, as you know, I was paying for my college loans and stuff with whatever money I was scraping together with waitressing and really struggling to bridge the gap between where I was and where I wanted to be. And my passion is film. I love filmmaking. I love acting. And I just didn't know how the heck I was going to get from A to B. And I didn't want to do the classic, like starving waitress in LA route either. <laughs> right. So, and I was living in Phoenix anyway, but um, I decided to quit and jump into starting a YouTube channel. And there's a whole lot of other stuff that went on in between that and YouTube, which I don't know if I'll go into, but basically I made the leap and it worked out really well. But I will say that I had help. It wasn't just my own effort. All right, so that transition. So when folk, my listeners hear that and they're like, okay, I can see that transition. Was this a, an aha moment overnight? Uh, and then you made a glorious exit, uh, telling your boss where to go sort of thing. Or was this something that had really been building up over time and then you were able to kind of like lay a path for yourself? You know, can you tell us about your uh, your exit there, if you will? Yeah, so <laughs> I didn't pull the I'm out of here. I given, you know, my two weeks notice and I was respectful and kind about the whole thing. But the YouTube decision I had been considering for quite a while because I wanted to build an audience for myself. My thought process was, if I build an audience, then I'll be able to sell myself to casting directors and producers better because you know it's an industry and you need to know that your your actors are going to draw a crowd for your films. And it actually worked out pretty perfectly and ended up getting a, a role in my biggest movie at the time, which was an Amazon Prime film. Okay, so. well, tell, tell us about tell us about your uh, your role. And you said at the time, I only found that you had one. So uh, tell us about one, and then what you have coming up. Yeah, so I've been in a few other just like non-paid projects, film projects. I only just got into acting in 2019. And I've been taking classes for a little while. So still a little fish in a, a big ocean. But uh, yeah, the Amazon Prime movie, which is coming out um, sometime this year, was my biggest role to date. And I didn't even have to audition for it, which was really cool. Well, so uh, yeah, if you don't mind sharing that, was that a, just a networking kind of thing? And like how we met, you know, somebody knows somebody and they're like, I have the perfect person for you. Sort of. I was kind of looking for um, production companies that I wanted to reach out to and work with, you know, checking out their films, seeing if they made things that I resonated with. And that production company, New Zealand Sun, 
made a few other films that I thought were really neat. So I started following them on Instagram and then they, you know, saw my comments on their posts and things and reached out to me and asked if I wanted a role because they had actually looked at my YouTube channel and noticed that I had a large following. Oh, very nice. That's, yeah. uh, that's the power of social media. I love it. Um, yeah. So how, if you don't mind sharing, again, how big was the following? Uh, I mean, everybody starts at zero. Uh, <laughs> how, how big did it get? Is it continuing to grow sort of thing or? Yeah, at the time, I don't know if I could remember exactly how big my following was at the time, but when I started on YouTube, we hit, I actually hit a viral video somewhere in the beginning, um, but we hit 100,000 subscribers around four months. And I think that's where I was at when the movie happened. But now we're at about 240,000 and I haven't uploaded it in a while, but I know that my audience is waiting for me to come back. And that's all because of the business and things. I kind of derailed that. But uh, yeah, I want to get back to it soon. Right. Well, I, I hear you about, you know, business and multi, multiple priorities and things. Yeah. And it, it certainly uh, can, it takes a lot of effort, but it's certainly worth the effort. Uh, when you think of 100,000 subscribers in, in four months, I'm at six months and I, I just cracked 100 subscribers. So uh, that's why she's talking and I'm not uh, because she she has the expertise to, to do this. Um, did the same thing happen on Instagram? Uh, did it blow up as well or... Um, what, you know, tell us about like your Instagram experience, if you will. So on Instagram, I kind of just started it because I wanted to have a place to talk more about myself and my own interests and what I had going on since my channel was very much about India and Indian movies and things. So I was kind of like, I didn't get to be myself. I was an American looking at something else that it wasn't necessarily a reflection of my own personality. But when I started on Instagram, my audience from YouTube just wanted to know more about me basically and they flocked to my my instagram profile and that helped it grow a lot but i also had some specific methods for writing captions and making content and collaborating with people that helped me pick up a thousand followers a week for a few months okay we'll, we'll get we'll get right back to that in a second um but you made me made me think of i, I listened to one of your videos uh, somewhere along the line where you talked about why you chose, and you did reaction videos, which is cool. I guess I didn't really know that was a thing, uh, but after having watched a couple, it's like, okay, I, I, I see where that's fun, right? And, and it's somebody else's content. Um, talk about why, uh, what I think is a great story, and I already know the answer, but tell my listeners why you chose India. Yeah, okay. So um, I was really struggling at the beginning to come up with a theme or a uh, yeah, I guess a theme for my YouTube channel. I, I had been doing vlogs. I did a couple of vlogs and they didn't really get a lot of traction. I had like 30 followers or so. And I decided to look into reactions and I didn't go into India first. My first reaction video was actually Ricky Gervais speech at the Golden Globes back in January. Um, and that actually blew up for me. So we, with my fiance's great SEO capabilities, we made it to the number three video spot for that search term. And so picked up like 60,000 views within a day. And we realized that we'd actually kind of hit a jackpot there. Um, but there were not a whole lot of other things coming out where we could replicate those results. So we looked into other cultures, Hollywood movies and things. But what resonated with me most was India, because I knew I would be able to maintain an interest in it since at the time I had very little knowledge of India. And I actually had a lot of preconceived notions, I would say, about that country. And I, at the time, had never thought of visiting because I thought it was, you know, dirty and unsafe. But my thoughts have changed greatly since learning more about it. And that's why yeah. I picked it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I remember you saying it's not really taught in schools like it is with you know China and Europe and, and Japan. Uh, so I, I think you make a great point there. I have Indian friends and Indian clients and, and you're right, it's just not taught in the mainstream. Um, so I, I think that it was a, it was a brilliant choice. Uh, I do have to ask, so the, the Ricky Gervais uh, video, were you guys, you know, if you don't mind me asking, were you guys like watching it together and then all of a sudden you hear that video and you were just like, that's gold? I mean, what he, the stuff he was saying, or did, was this like three days later when you went, you know, we could use that. Did you, do you remember how it went down? Yeah. So our thought process was, this is trending right now. We should probably do a reaction video to it. 
and it's kind of funny i made like six different takes trying to get the yeah. right reactions and people still hated me for it i got a lot of hate comments on that video but it just showed that trending topics are the key for growing a reaction channel yeah well i think you know you mentioned an interesting word hate um and you know i have two daughters myself and, and they both are active on social media i'm getting more active uh again at, at a far slower pace you know good pace for my age but slower far slower than, than, you know, the younger generation, if you will. And, you know, I've, I've heard my daughters talk about the amount of, of hate that you will get. It seems like no matter what you do or say, somebody's uh, offended. So uh, if you don't mind sharing your kind of thoughts on on how you deal with that hate or, or you know, the role of hate in social media for, for the folks that are considered doing the same thing. Yeah, it was really hard <laughs> to deal with. Um, what I ended up doing was handing off the role of managing comments to my fiance because he was, you know, a third party and it didn't affect him so much. I mean, of course, he's still upset that people are saying this to me, but I tried to manage it myself and I could not stop myself from responding to the comments and that just makes it worse. So I would say if possible, the first thing you could do if you're really, you know, curious about starting a YouTube channel is try to get someone to take over the comments for you if you can't handle it. Yeah, well, that, uh, that that's good advice. I hadn't, hadn't thought of that particular angle. Um, but yeah, I've seen some of the stuff, you know, I, you know, as a parent, you monitor, you know, the stuff going back and forth on my daughter's accounts uh, on occasion, you know, spot checking, but it, you know, you do see some stuff in there. It's just like, hmm, that's a, it, it's a, it's a different world that you're, that, you know, they're growing in versus what you grew up in versus what I grew up in uh, for sure. Um, so, so you, you've talked about a business, so I'm excited to talk about that. Um, uh, so now I know you're doing some acting and, you know, I would assume that's primary, uh, to, to, to break into that scene, which is like very challenging to do, but tell us what you're doing with social media and, and how you're making money. And you did mention uh, a partner to me earlier. Um, so tell, tell us what you do for folks and, uh, tell my listeners. Yeah. So when we got to the success we achieved which is about 30 230,000 followers on youtube we decided that we had a big knowledge base that we could use to help people and it was admittedly a very rough start breaking into business because youtube is a huge responsibility if you commit to it you can't you know put one foot in and one foot out you have to commit fully and we found that even though people wanted the benefits of having a YouTube channel and keeping up with a YouTube channel, they wouldn't do it and they couldn't do it. Right. So yeah, we ended up just struggling to find clients. And even if we did get clients, they would pay for our services and then not carry on with what we taught them. And that didn't feel good for us. So I ended up pivoting into Instagram, which I had a little bit more knowledge about. I don't know a whole lot about YouTube myself since I was just on the front end and my business partner and fiance was handling the back end and he's much more strategic minded than I am. I'm more aesthetic and creative, but uh, yeah. So since I've moved into Instagram, I found a lot more success and I've been doing the five day challenge with you and other people and it's been going really, really well. So I'm glad to be able to exercise my creativity and help people grow their businesses. And it has started to generate more money for me, more than I made as a waitress. And my goal is to become self-sufficient so that I can travel around to auditions and film sets without worrying about work. Okay, so to enable uh, what you really want to do, you know, monetize your uh, expertise. Well, I think that's fantastic. And, and you mentioned, um, you know, working for me and, and hopefully that was a good experience for you. It was a great experience for me, but uh, you know, the what, one thing that really made me for folks that are out there interested in working with Indy is, and I struggle myself with clarity sometimes because we had our initial interview and she's like, what's your purpose of social media? And I'm like, I don't know any of these things, right? So I struggle with clarity and I think I've got a better grip on it now by working with Indy, but I will tell you, it's very clear. Uh, if you reach out to Indy and you, or you come across her on LinkedIn, uh, it, her little tagline like punches you in the mouth. It says specifically, I, I can do your social media better than you. Right. I, I read that and it was just like, well, there's there's the truth bomb for my day because I was like, oh yeah, I, I've never met you and I can guarantee you that that's the truth, you know, right? Because I'm terrible at it. So uh, I think with that level of, you know, that your mechanisms to get your word out there and I'll help you uh, through some re reviews as well. 
um, to get your name out there. But yeah, I, th I think you're going to do fantastic uh, in your business. Um, so with that, um, having, you know, you, you've got a lot of experience at a young age and you mentioned being courageous, which I think is very important because a lot of people, you know, that, that's the challenging part. But if you are younger, I've always said that, you know, entrepreneurship doesn't know age. Right. Now, like I flew airplanes. Airplanes don't care how old you are, what gender you are, what color you are. It cares nothing. Right. It's, it's all you have to have a good skill set. So I think entrepreneurship is the same way. Uh, but if, with the experiences you've had, what would you tell either like a younger version of yourself or the younger folks that are listening that are like, I want to follow in Indy's footsteps? What advice do you have for them? Oh, my gosh. Where to start? <laughs> when, I was, when I was younger, I actually thought to myself, I would never want to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> and the reason I said that was because I had the this idea in my mind, this perspective that entrepreneurs work 16, 20 hour days and they're not guaranteed to make any money. And it's really just like a crapshoot. And so I avoided it. And that's kind of how I ended up as a waitress, even though I hated it. Um, but I would say that mindset is so important. And the best thing to do for yourself, if you are seriously considering going into entrepreneurship is developing the right mindset so that you don't have to work those 16 hour days and you can accept the money that you're being paid for your services and not beat yourself up for it. I read recently that it's possible that people think they have to work that long because they don't think they deserve the money they make for what they do for people. So they just grind and they grind and grind and grind to make it worth it. And that's not a way to live. So mindset first. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I've read a lot about the you know, imposter syndrome, kind of you're talking about people, they have the expertise, but they don't believe that uh, you know, that, that they are the expert out there. And, and it's, it's interesting because it's the, like, you may not, you may be the number one in the world. I don't know. But all I know is that, you know, you know, 10 to a hundred times more than I do about the topic, which makes you very valuable to me. So, you know, th that's a, th that's a great insight for folks out there. All right. Well, we've come kind of the end of our show. So as far as I will put some stuff in the show notes, but if somebody uh, was listening to this and it's just like, I'm so inspired by her, I would like to talk to her, at least, you know, interface with her. How, how would you like folks to reach out to you? Oh, email would be great or add me on LinkedIn. That would be awesome too. Uh, I don't know if you'll probably include my email in the, the notes at the end here. Yeah, you bet. All right. Well, that sounds good. Yeah, I'll have that in the uh, the show notes, but it's Andy Rossi official at gmail.com. So I like that the official is there. I do have to ask, is that from a, a like influencer perspective or is that like an acting thing to where actors have you know the official ones or where'd you get the official? Actually, it's because there were a lot of people when I started and people probably don't think about this, but when I started to get a really big audience on YouTube, people started to impersonate me to try to scam other people. So I had to take that email address and I should probably get an actual domain for it, but we're good now. I haven't had problems like that in a while. Yeah. Well, that, that's yeah. Uh, crazy. Another price of, uh, of success, right? So, right. all right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you uh, so, so much for being on today's show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. All right. Well, that's all we have for today's show, everyone. Please reach out to me at steve at ototnow.com with any questions or concerns. And thanks again for you to joining me here on the Financial Thought Leadership Series and fighting the good fight every day to be on time on target with your financial goals. Goodbye.